Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Francesco, and I want to thank you for joining me for the start of this course and our first topic. Hopefully for me, I'm not just the host of these videos, and instead, I'm also your actual professor for this course. I want to thank you for being here. I recognize that you're choosing to take the time to watch these videos, so I really appreciate it, and I hope you're well. This is our first lesson, lecture. I'm not sure how you and I want to describe these videos. I will refer to them as video topics, maybe, if that's okay. As I mentioned in the course introduction, the expectation for all of our classes is that you'll have downloaded the course notes to your device of choice and read the course notes and viewed the video topics before your get together with your professor. Hopefully it's me. That way, your professor, hopefully me, and then guide you through an example or two during our get together. Also, if you haven't viewed the welcome video for this course, please do so now before you continue. I have linked it for you in the description below, so it's right there for you to check out. Right now, this is what we're covering with this topic. First, I will tell you a little bit about the Ontario Building Code and what it is. Then, I will tell you a little bit about how the Ontario Building Code is arranged. Next, I will introduce you to the Building Code's numbering system, which is used to reference specific portions of it. And finally, I will conclude by showing you some of the icons that you're going to find in the course notes and the upcoming lecture videos as will um, and I will also explain what these icons mean. So let's start with what the building code is. What is the Ontario Building Code or OBC for short? Well, for starters, it is likely the heaviest textbook you will ever use. Almost 2,400 pages spread over two volumes. The Ontario Building Code is the perfect learning system. Not only will it provide food for your mind with the learning, it will also help you train your body. I'm sorry, I'm being a little silly, but the Ontario Building Code, or OBC for short, is essentially <clears throat> A set of minimum provisions respecting the safety of buildings with reference to public health, fire protection, accessibility, and structural sufficiency. It is not intended to be a textbook on building design. It is not intended to be a textbook with advice on uh, uh, how to build things because that advice needs to be sought from professional sources. The primary purpose of the Ontario Building Code is the promotion of public safety through the application of appropriate uniform building standards. That's pretty fancy, right? Well, I took these words straight out of the Ontario Building Code, straight out of the OBC. Perhaps, maybe in somewhat simpler English, the Ontario Building Code is meant to be a set of promotions of public safety. So, basically, a compendium of guidelines to ensure legal construction uh, in Ontario is safe and energy efficient. Also, I think it's important to point out that by this very definition, the Ontario Building Code will always represent the minimum applicable construction standards in Ontario. These construction standards have gotten quite good, especially when it comes to energy conservation, but they are, by definition, the minimum 
standards in Ontario. And this will be true no matter how much more the Ontario Building Code improves. Oh, and while I'm at it, I also want to remind you one last time that it is very common for the Ontario Building Code to be referred to as OBC for short. Okay, it's an acronym for Ontario Building Code. Lastly, I also want to mention that the Ontario Building Code is not law. That's right, it's not law. Instead, the Ontario Provincial Government passed a law called Ontario Regulation 332-12, which states that what we know as the Ontario Building Code shall be used in Ontario for construction purposes. But that law can change at any time and say that you must use a different building code. Okay? So, for all intents and purposes, you're using the Ontario Building Code as law, but it's not law itself. The law says you have to use it for now. <laughs> it's not going to change, though. Okay, let's talk a little bit about how the Ontario Building Code is arranged. If you purchased a new hard copy of the Ontario Building Code, like the ones that I have here on the side, it came in a big box. Okay? The box contains two large seven ring binders and large vacuum sealed stacks of paper. Okay? You have to take them all apart to assemble these two volumes. There are instructions at the very start of the stack of papers about what goes where and what stack goes in what binder. Okay? Some of them go in volume one, some of them go in volume two. Oh, and uh, don't forget that uh, there are also tab separators in this package. They are very helpful in finding information in the hard copy of the Ontario Building Code. So make sure you make use of them and put them in. Volume one contains the preface, the Ontario Building Code Act, divisions A, B, and C, the index, and pending amendments. Division A is fairly small, and it contains parts 1, 2, and 3. We will use Division A just a little bit for this course. Division B is much thicker, and it contains parts 1 all the way to part 12. You and I will use this division, Division B, much more, especially part 3 and a little bit, little bit of part 9. Okay? Division C is somewhere between Division A and Division B in terms of thickness. You and I won't use Division C for the purposes of this course. The preface is at the start of Volume 1, and I recommend you check it out. Okay? It's a quick read. Meanwhile, you can find pending amendments at the end of Volume 1. These amendments at the end of volume one are pages that are to be, that are to replace specific pages inside the building code at specific future dates. If you look at these amendment pages, you will notice that it says that on the amendment pages themselves, when you're supposed to replace the equivalent pages currently in the building code. Oh, and I should also explain uh, what the word Edition means when it comes to the Ontario Building Code. It refers to the year when the Ontario Building Code was officially approved and released. Currently, the latest edition is the 2012 edition of the Ontario Building Code. So, be curious, look around, okay? I strongly recommend making use of the tabs when you set up the uh, volumes of the Ontario Building Code. Okay. For volume two, it contains supp supplementary material, so helpful material. That is, volume two is all about additional information to help understand and explain and also how to better use volume one. So volume two is all about extra help and information relating to how to use volume one. So. Volume 2 contains Appendix A, 
which contains explanatory material for divisions A, B, and C from Volume 1. It contains Appendix B, which contains conversions and information about SI units, and all the supplementary standards, which are labeled with the letter S, right? You can see S, followed by either the letter A, B, or C to denote whether that supplementary standard is covering uh, division A, B, or C in volume one. Okay. And the last item in volume two is a set of forms, a relevant forms that you'll come across if you ever get involved with the Ontario Building Code and using it as part of your business. So the next thing that I want to discuss with you is the numbering system. The numbering system in the Ontario Building Code is very important because it details how you, me, and everyone else using the Ontario Building Code will reference anything in the Ontario Building Code. This numbering system is very, very specific, and it's not necessarily intuitive at first, so I'd like to cover it a bit. You see, did you know that you actually do not use page numbers to reference the Ontario Building Code? Yeah, that's true. In fact, for this course, using a page number as a reference in the Ontario Building Code will get you a zero in tests and exams. And that's because that's not how you do it. Page numbers, bad. Okay? Now, I know that's weird, but it's true. You don't use page numbers because in the Ontario Building Code, as you know uh, from the amendments that I just mentioned, pages and page numbers can change at any point. Sometimes pages and page numbers and the content on those pages can change multiple times during the course of one year. So a page number that is valid on your copy is not valid on my copy. They can change day to day, month to month, year to year. Okay. So for example, what could be on page 36 on your building code might actually be on page 35B on my building code. All of this to say, do not use page numbers to reference the Ontario building code. Instead, you want to use what's called the decimal system, the decimal numbering system. And I'm going to walk you through exactly how that system works right now. I have placed on the screen right now, you can see it here, an example of a reference in the Ontario Building Code. This specific reference you see on the screen right now in front of me does not actually exist, at least not that I could find. So it's completely made up. But it's going to be useful for the purposes of teaching us how to reference something in the Ontario Building Code. So right now, I'm looking at this reference, and you're looking at it too, and I'm seeing a whole bunch of numbers. There are dots, there are brackets, there are letters in lowercase, uppercase. I even see a Roman numeral somewhere here. It's weird, right? So as you can see, the first four numbers are separated by dots. Then, after the first four numbers, everything else is in brackets, okay? Let's start at the beginning of this reference, from the very, very left, okay? From the very, very left. The first number refers to the part. That's the level. That's the level, what the name is for that level. The part, as it's called in the Ontario Building Code. The second number refers to the section in the Ontario Building Code. The third number, the next level, is the subsection followed by article. These first four levels are numbers and dots only, as you can see. And when shown, when written in the Ontario Building Code, they're always written horizontally on the same line. After the article level, the rest of the levels, as you can see, are all in brackets. And when shown in the Ontario Building Code, they're actually written not on the same line, but under each other. So we have sentence, clause, 
subclause and sub subclause. As a result, when you see a reference that looks like this, right here, how do we read it? How is that read, right? If you have to tell somebody else this, so find the information here, how do you read it? Well, when you read, say, this reference out loud, you would say the name of the lowest level visible to the right. Okay? So in this case, that lowest level, as you can see here, is sub sub clause. So you start by saying that word or those words. And then you read left to right. Okay? Like this. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. I'm going to do it out loud. So you read this by saying sub sub clause. Okay? Sub sub clause. 3.6.2.3.1 FIA. Does that make sense? Let me try that again. It's going to be read sub sub clause 3.6.2.3.1 FIA. Does that make sense? Oh, I hope you see that. This is not difficult, but it is new to you. So it requires practice to get comfortable with it. And that's fine. That's the whole point of this course is to become comfortable with something you don't know. In this case, the Ontario Building Code. Okay. Okay. Let's try this now. How about we find a specific requirement together? So Get your copy of the Ontario Building Code and find volume one, like this. We are going to find sentence 3.2.2.9.2, okay? What you see on the screen right now. Sometimes you may see it referenced as something like this, with this B in square brackets in front of it. So that indicates that it's in division B. I want you to be aware in this case that this letter in square brackets is commonly used, okay, to indicate what division that reference is in. I'm going to clean things up a little bit and remove it for now, okay, as we continue with our little practice example. So please open up volume one of your Ontario Building Code compendium and Using the tabs along the side, find Division B, then Part 3. You'll notice that there are many tabs on the side, so use them to find what you need. As you can see, these tabs are labeled, and they provide a very convenient way to access all the appropriate portions of the Ontario Building Code. In Volume 1, I want you to identify Division B, Part 3. I'm even going to wait while you pause me and get there. Now, we use the reference we see in the top left and the top right corners of these pages to guide us. If you're looking at the hard copy, I don't care about the page numbers which are at the bottom corners of each page. And that's because your page number, again, may be different from my page number and they're not helpful in finding requirements in the Ontario Building Code. So right here, see this article titled Crawl Spaces? It is Article 3.2.2.9. Remember, because the fourth number from the left is called article. You know it's the correct one because it reads, a floor assembly immediately above a crawl space is not required to be constructed as a fire separation and is not required to have a fire resistance rating, provided the crawl space is not required to be considered as a basement by sentence one. I hope that makes sense, but the content of this is actually not relevant for the purpose of our example. All right, we're almost there, I promise. Okay, but this is how we would find it. Okay, how we would find this reference. So, as the final item for this video topic, I want to point out two icons that you're going to find in your course notes and in these videos. And that's 
these two icons. The first one is this open book icon. Whenever you see this icon, it means go to the Ontario Building Code and find this reference and read the whole thing. So this includes any other item that is referenced in whatever reference this takes you to. What I mean is that if the words in the reference say, except for this sentence, or in accordance with this table, you also want to read all of those requirements. On the other hand, whenever you see this icon, it means time for you to practice. So basically, do a practice question or do the homework associated with that specific topic or portion of the course notes or portion of the video lecture. Ugh. Homework. Ugh. Why? Yes, I'm sorry. There will be homework. You see, this course is an introductory course to the Ontario Building Code, and homework is your friend for this course. Learning about the Ontario Building Code is so new to all of you. Okay? You have never done something like this before, and therefore you need the practice. You need to practice to become comfortable with the Ontario Building Code. So, honestly and truthfully, I want to tell you that doing the homework is going to help you rock the heck out of this course. For real. It's not a waste of time. So whenever you see this icon, grab a pen or a pencil. I recommend a pencil. Grab paper or something similar and carry out whichever practice question or homework is set out in your course notes or is associated with this icon. Folks, this means we're done. It's the end of our first video topic. And I want to thank you so much for taking the time to view this. I really appreciate it. I hope you get a chance to review the next topic, which is major occupancies. If you're curious, in this next topic, there will be a discussion that will involve, among other things, fake buildings. Take care, everyone, and be well.